Traders, I would like to discuss today something for which for many of you is uh, quite obvious and that is uh, shorting stocks. But there's plenty of people out there and I'm sure there are some who joined us now in YouTube uh, that don't really know how shorting works. And I want to set it up uh, once time and talk about it uh, clearly so that uh, all of you guys understand and possibly uh, those of you, of course, who knows what shorting is all about uh, will also find something in what I've, I'm just about to say uh, that would make you interesting, interested. So let's talk about, I just had two shorts today and here are my results. Uh, Tesla $16,000 in profits and still riding it and HIG, I'm out of this trade, uh, just gained $1,700 and it's not as big mover as, is tes as Tesla is and I do trust Tesla more so I shorted more size. So anyway, uh, Two trades today, 100% success and uh, two fantastic shorts really. But what's the whole idea of shorts? Why do you see me shorting more than I go long? Because you do see that I short, mo most of my trades are on the short side. I would say 75% of my trades are shorting stocks, not going long stocks. And why is that? Well, the first thing you need to know that uh, the market usually is moving higher. So I would say about uh, two thirds of the time, the S&P is moving higher and just one third of the time, the market's coming down. However, when the market's coming down, when stocks are, mark are coming down, they are coming down much faster than they're going up, like 80% on average faster than they go up. So your advantage in shorting a stock, it's much greater than your advantage in going long. So if you do take the shorting to the next level, if you do know more a little bit more, a little bit more and you learn a little bit more, and we're going to talk about it right now about shorting stocks, then shorting stocks will help you to become a better trader. And why do stocks move lower faster than they move higher? That's because fear works much better than greed. People love to buy stocks when they, when they are moving up. I mean, look at Tesla recently, look at ZM, look at everything that people like to jump aboard and start buying. But they do not move as fast as stocks that move down because fear is much stronger than greed. And anyway, uh, we have two nice examples here of uh, HIG and uh, Tesla. So let's take a quick look here. Uh, the first thing you can see here, HIG started with a gap down, so I was expecting it to come down and then I shorted it. And now we're going to learn what is shorting and how it works. Because again, some of you don't really know that. And the second one was Tesla, again, started with a gap up this time. However, for different reasons, I thought it should come down. The main reason was the market and the market is coming down and uh, therefore Tesla, in my opinion, should have came down too. Again, profit taking, uh, good, re good results in Tesla, whatever it is, uh, Tesla uh, looked to me like a good short and, uh, and therefore it works. Now, first thing you need to take a look is HIG. Look at the way it came down. Once it broke under support here, it came down so quick. Look, count the one minute candles here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. It came down for thir from 39 to 38. That's a one point move, a little bit more than 2% in this case in a $39 stock, uh, almost 2.5% in just a few minutes and look at the way it's moving on. it's moving up very nicely but it takes it like 30 minutes to do or more actually to to move higher uh rather than the the, the way it came down so you, you you can see the fear here you can see the volume of the fear you can see how it came down and again if you take a look at tesla it's not coming down as fast as hig did but uh it's a better trade because again more size and it's a bigger mover and so and so on so again the fact is stocks are moving down faster than they are moving up one more reason you can make more money in shorting stocks and it's a very important reason is because Let's, just, let's start with ordinary people. 99% of the people you will stop in the street don't really know how shorts work. Most of them never heard about shorting. And then those who did hear about shorting don't know how shorting works. It is important to understand how shorting works. And let me go quickly through that. Let's think, let's uh, take HIG as an example. Let's say I think HIG should come down, it's $39 and I want to short it. I short it a little bit lower, but you know, just for the example here, it's going to help me. So uh, let's say I want to short HIG at $39. 
The first thing I do by shorting a stock is selling a stock that I don't own. How can I sell a stock <laughs> that I don't own? Well, you know, there's uh, two ways to explain that. One, uh, you just uh, take a look at uh, your trading platform. Here's my trading platform. Here's Tesla. I'm still short, as you can see, 50 shares. That's all. And uh, you take a look at uh, Tesla, there's a sell button in some other platforms. It's a short button. You just click that button. You don't care what happens in the background. It does work. You just click that button. If you want to make money from stock that is coming down, click the sell button or the short button. And I promise you, you're going to make money, <laughs> assuming the stock is coming down. So anyway, that, 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 that's a short explanation. The long explanation is I'm actually, once I click the sell button or the short button, I'm selling stocks that I don't own. Now, let's say I just sold 100 shares of HIG. If I'm selling 100 shares of HIG at $39, and I will soon explain how can I sell a stock that I don't own, okay, you are obviously waiting, some of you are obviously waiting for this, for this answer. Uh, so if I sell it at $39, 100 shares at $3,900, $3,900 that I just received. Does it come into my pocket? No, it goes into my trading account, but actually the broker who runs, of course, this platform and my money is deposited at that broker, the broker doesn't really allow me to take that money, but I just sold 100 shares and I'm theoretically received $3,900. Now, let's assume I was right. Let's assume I was right and I was today and HRG came all the way down to $38. Let's say I want to take my profit at $38. So if I started by selling a stock, the only way to get out of the trade is by buying the stock and you take the other side. And soon I will explain how it works. But I started by clicking the button, pressing the sell button, Selling, let's say, 100 shares. I did it more size, but let's just say 100 shares. And then once it came down to $38, I'm clicking the buy button. And now I'm buying 100 shares. Now, remember, when I sold the 100 shares, the broker loaned them to me. The broker gave me 100 shares, which I don't have. I will explain soon how the broker has it. But then when I click the buy button, I just bought 100 shares and I returned my loan to the broker. Now, how does that work? If I'm working with an equities broker, let's talk about that and then I will explain about CFD broker. If I'm working with an equities broker and I want to short a stock that I don't own, meaning I want to sell 100 shares that I don't have, it has to come from somewhere. So the broker that runs thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands accounts probably have some customers who are long HIG. Well, it's more likely that customers are long a stock than they are short a stock because again, most people don't know how to store. That is your advantage. The money comes where people don't know what to do, not where people, not where people knows what to do. Remember that always. So some people are long HIG. Let's call the guy David. David owns 400 shares of HIG. I just decided I want to short 100 shares of HIG. David has an account with the same broker that I do. So my broker, once I click that button, is actually going to David's account without asking David. <laughs> He's not being asked. He's just taking 100 shares and selling the 100 shares based on my click of the button, my sell order. So I clicked the sell order to sell 100 shares. The broker took from David's account 100 shares, yes, it's legal, <laughs> and sold it because I ordered the broker to do so. Now, not all shares are uh, shortable. Some of them have low volume and so on. So you may not be able to short the stock. And again, I don't have this issue with the CFD platform, but uh, that is the issue sometimes. But anyway, most of the shares are shortable. I click the button. One other shares came out of David's account. Does the broker tell David that I just sold 100 shares of his own account? No, <laughs> David doesn't know that. Is it legal? Yes, it is legal, as I mentioned before. I own 100 shares to the broker, but actually the, the 100 shares are missing from David's account. I, I don't care. I don't know, David. I don't know whose account I borrowed the shares from. Anyway, I click the button. David is not being told. And now when I buy the 100 shares, once HIG came down to $38, 
once I buy it, then the uh, 100 shares goes back to uh, David's account. Now, what happens if David doesn't really... Let's say David wants to sell his 400 shares before I click the button. How does it happen? Well, no problem. The broker owes David 100 shares. Then he'll go to John's account and he'll take from John's account 100 shares and give it to David. He'll play with the, sh with the shares within his account. There's no problem, no issue. David shouldn't know. <laughs> and yes, it's legal. You know, some people are a little bit confused. First I sell. How can I first sell and then I buy? I just change the direction. You know, it's the same like going long. When you go long a stock, you buy a stock and then you sell it, right? You buy it at 38 and then you sell it at 39. There's nothing there. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same system. You first sell and then you buy. That's the whole idea of shorting. It's quite simple. You just borrow the shares. It's the same idea. You cannot make money from a stock. You know, when the only way to make money is if you buy something cheap and you sell something high, right? But you can start by selling and then you can go buying right after you sold. If that sounds confusing, uh, even if you never shorted a stock, you shorted many other things in your life. Actually, the seller shorted many other things. Let's say you want to buy a sofa. And you go to the next, I don't know, uh, beautiful sofa house. And you just found yourself your dream sofa. It costs $2,000. Usually they will have to order it, order it maybe from Italy. You will have to wait two months, three months until it comes, arrives to, I don't know, if you live in the States. Uh, and then you just, let's say you just went to the seller and you say, okay, I'm buying. And let's say you just pay $2,000. You just pay $2,000 for a sofa that the owner of the shop doesn't own. So in fact, what happens here is that the owner of the shop just sold you a sofa that he doesn't own. He accepted $2,000 for the sofa. He doesn't own the sofa. Now he goes to the dealership, to the uh, producer, let's say in Italy, and he buys it for $1,000, let's say. When he first sold you the sofa for $2,000, he accepted your money for $2,000, and then he bought it for $1,000. So he first sold, then he bought. It's the same idea, right? He sells first, and then he buys. So he actually shorted the sofa for you, if you didn't understand the whole idea about uh, how it works. So if I go back here, the way to make money shorting stocks, again, just to summarize it, is first by selling, then by buying. Think yourself as if you were the, the sofa seller. It's just as simple as that. And just to summarize things, stocks are coming down much faster than are moving up. Therefore, you have an advantage shorting stocks. Most people don't know how to short stocks. That's another advantage. The money lies where people don't know what to do. If everybody knows how to clean the streets, you're not going to make much money cleaning streets. That's a simple rule and it always works. So find yourself some occupation that is special, that is different. And within day trading, shorting, there's more money in shorting than going long. And, uh, you know, again, uh, stocks coming down faster than they are than moving up. And I've said all of this. So um, that's it. That's the whole idea and uh, fun about share things. And you know what? I, it is more fun. That maybe could be another reason. Uh, and, and still, if you never shorted the stocks, you're going to get hooked on this. Just click the short button once. Try and see what's going on. You, you, people don't usually understand, even though I just explained how short works. And I do know many of you don't, some of you don't know how shorting works. You know, be brave. Click the button once. Just take a look. You'll take a look at, uh, at, at, at your of your opinion, look, I'm short 50 shares, right? It says minus 50. Why minus? Because I sold something I don't own. Now, if I want to buy it back, I need to buy 50 shares. And therefore, at that point, I will cover my, it's called cover, cover my 50 shares uh, short in, uh, in uh, Tesla. Now, there's just one more explanation I owe to you guys. I'm trading a CFD platform. With a CFD platform, it's much easier to short. Why is that? Uh, that's because the brokers in the CFD platforms are 
the, the market makers. There's market makers in Wall Street. Of course, 60% of the trades you're doing in, in Wall Street are going through market makers. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is all run by market makers, of course. So uh, there's in, there are CFD uh, brokers too all around the world. CFD is much more uh, spread around outside the US. More people trade CFD platforms than they trade uh, stocks, stock platforms. And when you short a stock, a CFD, then you, in fact, loan the stock from your broker. He doesn't go, have to go to David to take the stock. He covers, he hedges his trades with David's account, assuming David has an account and is long HIG. But he's definitely uh, able to loan you the stock even if he doesn't have a David who's right now uh, long the stock. So it's easier with CFDs. There's no other restrictions. There are some uptick restrictions, liquidity restrictions, inequities. Uh, these ex those uh, are not uh, uh, in, in CFDs. So when you're trading CFDs, there are several advantages, other advantages I'm not going to get into it now, but some of them, one of them is shorting, which, is, which makes your life much, much uh, simple. So if again, you ask yourself why 75% of my trades are on the short side, there's more, more money in it. I, I'm, I'm going where the money is. <laughs> you should too. So uh, at least have one system for shorting stocks. So I hope that uh, was helpful. And even though you probably know about shorting, um, maybe, maybe I just uh, taught you just, you know, a bit more about uh, the whole idea of shorting. So thank you for listening out. And um, as you know, I'm flying to Napoli tomorrow. So I'll see you next week. Thank you, traders, for joining today. And see you around. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.